patients with transcranial magnetic stimulation in graphs. Uh, good morning. I'm not Dr. Van Kamper. I'm a student at the Medical University of Prague, and my name is Sascha Freigang. In the next 10 minutes, I will speak about transcranial magnetic stimulation, in short TMS, which we are applying in a pilot study. The aim of the study is to investigate the impact of priming on a specific TMS paradigm called continuous data burst stimulation, in short CTBS. In this presentation, I will shortly outline the principles of TMS. I will explain our hypothesis and the expected results I will present the underlying study and show an exemplary case report. At the end, I will share our experience and tell you how to interpret them. As Dr. Krieg said, in TMS, an electric current is applied on the cortical surface. This allows TMS to have many different types of application, ranging from the treatment of major depression over rehabilitation in stroke patients to the non-invasive functional mapping of cortical areas. In our study, we use TMS as a diagnostic tool for language mapping and brain tumor patients. By now, it has already been shown. Uh, am I understandable? Or is it published to you? Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. By now, it has already been shown that um, TMS is a suitable method for this purpose. However, an accuracy variation can be found, and the consensus for a standard protocol is still missing. As many different types of protocols exist in the diagnostic setup, various effects on cortical neurons can be observed. These effects can be distinguished into excitation and inhibition. For example, in motor mapping, the focus is on an excitatory paradigm, which induces a motor evoked potential while stimulating the motor cortex. In language mapping, however, the focus is on inhibitory paradigms. And as it is one of the main features of our study, I will focus on continuous theta burst simulation, CTBS. As it is an inhibitory paradigm, CTBS induces a temporary focal lesion, which is similar to the effect used in direct cortical stimulation. The aim of a mapping prior to tumor surgery is to assess beforehand which, eloquent, which areas of the cortex are eloquent and which are not. Early information about the spatial distribution of functional areas can be helpful in the planning of the surgical procedure. To improve TMS language mapping, we designed the study mentioned at the beginning, including both main features of priming and CTBS. Because this protocol has not yet been compared to direct cortical stimulation, which is the gold standard. When speaking about CTBS, it has to be highlighted that there's a difference between CTBS and the conventional paradigm of TMS. The conventional paradigm consists of pulses applied per second. As you can see, it, five pulses make up a five hertz repetitive TMS paradigm. In contrast, in TWS stimulation, the pulses are grouped into bursts, whereas each burst consists of five pulses. Within the burst, the frequency is high. Frequency is applied at 60 hertz, and the bursts themselves are applied in a frequency of four to seven hertz, which is defined as theta frequency. The theta burst paradigm allows to apply many more pulses per second than the conventional paradigm, which results in a stronger inhibitory effect on cortical neurons. This inhibitory effect, however, can be influenced by priming. But what is priming? Priming is a specific time-dependent application of TMS prior to the mapping procedure. One factor of how priming influences the TMS is metaplasticity. Metaplasticity is a rule which says that the prior synaptic history of the cortex can change the response to a stimulation like TMS. As you can see it in the diagram, metaplasticity influences the motor cortex excitability when a CT-based paradigm is applied. The study showed, 
the study measured uh, the change in MEP amplitude compared to a baseline of 100% over a time of 30 minutes. And they showed that prime CTBS results in an increased MEP compared to 100% and therefore increases the inhibitory effect of the paradigm. Transferring this assumption to language eloquent areas, or at least language associated areas, we expect following effects to happen, which build up our hypothesis that primed CTBS will induce more language impairment due to an increased inhibitory effect on cortical neurons. To solve this hypothesis, we designed the study mentioned at the beginning, which includes right-handed patients with a tumor on the left hemisphere. They have to be planned for awake surgery, and the first step is that they will undergo an functional MRI combined with a language task. And based on these images, we will define TMS targets using a multimodal approach. We will consider all hotspots created by the fMRI. We will also cover all spots that might be tested in the direct cortical stimulation. And we will also consider anatomical references. The TMS itself is applied in two different sessions, randomized in sequence, and separated at least by one week. The TMS itself consists of the stimulation paradigm, which is applied simultaneously to a picture naming task. And while three pictures are shown and the patient is stimulated in one target, we will look for language errors. And when a language impairment occurs in two out of three pictures, we will rate the target as language positive. Major language impairment in our study is defined as hesitation or speech arrest. As a last step, the patient will undergo under awake surgery combined with a DCS language mapping to compare the results afterwards. This exemplary case report shows how we will compare the results at the end. It shows the left hemisphere of a 52-year-old woman presenting with a low-grade glioma on the left frontal region. Both pictures are oriented in the same way, and the green square marks the area of the intraoperative picture. The white squares mark the results of the DCS, and the blue dots represent our TMS targets. The orange circles mark areas where both methods show the same results. For example, in the area marked with an X, we observed speech arrests in TMS and DCS, and in both areas marked with the Y, we observed major language impairment due to difficulties to speak and facial muscle contractions. Even though there are some millimeters in between, considering the phenomenon of co-positivity due to the spatial distribution of TMS and DCS, the findings have a good correlation. We can summarize that in all patients, it's just three, um, who underwent the full protocol CTBS was capable of inducing major language impairments like speech arrests or hesitation. However, we observed a difference between primed and unprimed TMS. As in primed TMS, the percentage of positive targets was 5.5%, while in unprimed TMS, this rate increased to 21%. We therefore assume that priming, in contrast to our hypothesis, decreases the inhibitory effect of a CTBS paradigm. These results still has to be confirmed by a greater number of patients. But when further patients will show similar results, we will conclude that unprimed TMS is more suitable for the purpose of language mapping than primed TMS is. In the future direction, the assessment of CTBS and priming is just a small step to find an optimal TMS protocol for the purpose of language mapping. We therefore suggest to design multi-center studies, including a greater number of patients, to help TMS become a reliable and approved method for the purpose of language mapping in brain tumor patients. Thank you.